How many times per week should we train? How long should each session be? What should each session contain of? Can we focus on multiple goals at the same time? How long should an isometric hold be in order to trigger hypertrophy? There's many, many questions surrounding calisthenics training. This past year, I've started making my workshop events a little bit longer in order to have more time for questions at the end. And I'm realizing that, especially with calisthenics, when it comes to programming, there are lots of questions. At the end of the day, almost everybody has the same question. Almost every single athlete overcomplicates the answer drastically and misconceptions are endless. Welcome to Hanson and the Rest. I'm your host, Coach Bachmann. Today's episode is going to be all about calisthenics training. More specifically, about calisthenics training splits. Or in other words, how you can organize your workouts on a weekly level to be more efficient, to make more gains, to be healthier, to have more fun, and ultimately to gain an advantage over the other athletes. If you pay attention today and retain the main principles of this episode, you're going to be able to not only create a well-balanced training plan, but especially to answer most of these questions that you might have right now by yourself. In this episode, we're going to start by analyzing what does actually science say, how to get stronger and how to get better at calisthenics, and then we're going to look at why a training split is good, what kind of training splits there are, what are the advantages and disadvantages of every single one of these splits, and how we can get a little bit creative and possibly combine splits to end up with the ultimate training split. Getting stronger is not like trying to catch a unicorn. You're not trying to do something new or something that hasn't been researched well. We know exactly what it takes in order for a muscle to get stronger. We need to create a stimuli. You get this doing hard work during training. And then you need to combine rest, sleep, with nutrition, in other words, with food, in order to recover and to get stronger. The more you're going to train, the harder you work, the stronger you're going to get. That is true, but only if you get adequate rest. Your muscle, say for example, the biceps, the chest, the triceps, your back, needs to recover at least 48 hours before your next workout. Depending on how much experience you have with training, these 48 hours can be more or possibly also a little bit less. Calisthenics, at the end of the day, is strength training. Your planche push-up is your bench press. Your one-arm chin-up is your lat pull-down. Your handstand push-up is your shoulder press or your military press. Every single calisthenics move can be translated towards a weightlifting or a traditional gym move. The more you're gonna practice a calisthenics skill, the better you're gonna get at it. Just how you're gonna lift more, you're gonna get stronger. Again, assuming that you take enough time to recover between calisthenics sessions to actually be well rested and to go back to training. We measure strength training with hard working sets. How many hard working sets per muscle group per day you should be doing. Hard working set means a set that has enough reps that takes you close to failure. A hard working set can be made up of four reps, but it can also be made of 15 reps. The lower the rep count in this hard working set, the better it's going to be for strength gain. Yet, there's not much of a difference between five and 15 reps when it comes to hypertrophy to building bigger muscles. Say, for example, the pull up. If you can do nine pull ups, then doing nine pull ups is going to be a hard working set. If you toss an elastic around the bar and use it for assistance, and you only do nine pull-ups. Now, it's not going to be a hard working set because I know that there are still a lot of reps in the tank. So with the elastic, you'd probably have to do 15 or 16 or maybe even 20 reps to be back at your hard working set spectrum. So no matter how many reps it is, as long as you go close to failure, that is considered a hard working set. Very important to remember. Modern studies show that if you're trying to maintain muscle, meaning you're not trying to lose, you're not trying to gain, you just kind of want to be what you are for the foreseeable future. If you do three sets of hard working sets per week, that's going to be enough. If you want to gain muscle, you want to get stronger and you want to get bigger, you should be doing seven hard working sets per body part per week, already a little bit more challenging. And if you want to maximize growth, meaning you want to gain as much strength and as much size as quickly as possible, you're going to have to do 10 to even 12 working sets per muscle part per week. That's a lot. Now you could take these 10 or 12 hard working sets and just divide them over the week. Monday, you do 12 times for the chest, then you're gonna do 12 times back, 12 times legs. Basically, each day of the week is gonna be for one muscle group. That's traditionally called the bro split. It's very traditional how they used to work out back in the days. Now, there are a couple problems with this bro split. The first one being that you're probably working out to get stronger. This means your rep count 
has to be pretty low and your intensity needs to be high. And high intensity set is going to cause two things. Number one, you're going to have to recover longer. If you're going to do 10 to 12 hard working sets in one workout and you rest four minutes after every set, you're already just going to be resting for 45 minutes during your workout. And that doesn't take into account the time that you're actually working out. Your workouts are going to get very, very long. But now here's the other problem. A very intense set is going to fatigue you. Three, four intense sets in, you're going to get tired, which means, yes, the working sets stay difficult. They continue to be hard working sets, but they're not going to be very intense anymore because you're already tired. So instead of working 12 heavy working sets for the chest on Monday, we're going to take these and divide them. Let's say we know that we can do four hard working sets before we get too tired. Four on Monday, four on Wednesday, and four on Friday, because we know that after 48 hours, two days later, we are ready again to work that muscle. Meaning if you only work the muscle once a week, we're really wasting opportunity to get stronger and to get bigger there. Splitting these hard working sets into multiple workouts throughout the weeks is going to allow you a higher frequency, ultimately giving you more gains. Now, of course, this is great for strength and for power, but you got to see especially how this is amazing for if you're working on skills. When it comes to skill training, like the handstand push-up or the planche push-up or whatever it is, all calisthenics training is, yes, strength, but a whole lot of skill involved. The higher your frequency, the better it's going to get. So instead of having Monday planche, Wednesday front lever, and Friday handstand push-up day, how we can turn up the frequency, work certain skills more often, and with that, make gains much faster. Say, for example, if you would truly only work your planche on Mondays. That would only give you 52 opportunities per year to get better. Now, I know 52 does sound quite a lot, but imagine if you managed to work your planche twice. Now, all of a sudden, per year, you get 104 opportunities to get better at the planche. That's a tremendous difference. But now, listen to that. Maybe we could even find a way to train planche three times a week. All of a sudden, you're going to end up with 156 times per year to get better at the planche. Compare this to the other guy over there who's only working his planche 52 times per year and you know that you're winning. It's not even a question. Now, one argument might be, but why don't we just train the planche every single day, get 365 opportunities to get better? The idea is valid, but the problem is that you're going to get sore, not just your muscles, but also your tendons and your joints, meaning as long as you're natty, so you're not on steroids, you are going to get injured. You're not going to be able to recover. You're going to be in tremendous pain. And you're actually going to see your performance decline. So that's also not going to be an option for us. The argument here would be that gymnasts do train skills every single day. But this is where we have to draw a line between gymnastics skills and calisthenics training. A gymnast doesn't work to get the iron cross better every single day. No, a gymnast works on giants, on dismount, on these kind of things every single day. Those are technical skills. And technical training can absolutely happen every single day. Take the handstand, for example. If you want to get good at handstands, train your handstands five or even six times per week because they're technical. They shouldn't be physically as exhausting. But when it comes to strength training, planches, front levers, press to handstand, handstand push-up, no matter what it is, you have to dial it down. Your body does need time to recover. There's no way around this. So basically at this point, we can establish that we need a training split to be efficient with our training. We want to be able to train what it matters to us as often as possible per week and as hard as possible in every single workout while still giving our body a chance to recover. Starting off with a very basic split that actually works significantly better than many people expect. The full body split, meaning you're going to train your entire body, push, pull, upper body, lower body, everything in every single workout. This split traditionally is recommended for beginners, but Hear me out, because I don't think it's just for beginners. I think it's an excellent split for almost every single athlete out there. The idea is that you're going to train two to possibly three times per week. The great thing is that you're going to get an entire full day off to recover between every single workout. Additionally, your workout frequency is quite high because whatever your goal is, in every single workout, you can work on it. Meaning you're not just getting two, but you're getting three opportunities per week to get better at your planche or at your front level. What makes a split so great for beginners is that if you're splitting it further than a full body split, for a beginner, it might be difficult to fill an entire workout only with pushing exercises or only with pulling exercises. Due to the fact that you have to be good at calisthenics in order to do a wide variety of exercises, the full body split is going to allow you to get a full hour of training using only bodyweight exercises without hitting a wall and then just repeating the same thing over and over and over again. Another thing that I really like about this three times a week training is that your schedule is kind of flexible. Right? At some point throughout the week, you even get two days off in a row. 
This means that this third workout or the second workout, you can move it around a little bit. Let's say your plan is to work out Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. Yeah, but Wednesday it rains, you don't want to go to the park or whatever, something comes up. You can take this Wednesday workout and simply move it to Thursday and then take the Friday workout and move it to Saturday. This gives you a lot of flexibility when it comes to scheduling and makes the split very comfortable. To be fair, I was training a full body split for the past two years. Just very recently, I switched off my full body split into a different split that we're going to discuss towards the end. And it works well because remember, you need about 12 hard working sets per body part per week. Yeah, I can do it four sets of chest, four sets of shoulders, four sets of legs, and four sets of back in one workout. I can do 16 sets of exercises in one workout within one hour. That works. It's very feasible. So really, for optimal growth, this might be the split to go. But of course, just like everything, the full body split does come with a couple of disadvantages. One is that it might get repetitive. Unless you're very good at programming your workouts, you're basically going to be doing the same thing three times a week. And for many people, that is boring. That's not fun. This split is great for strength building, but if you're working on skills because you want to get good at a lot of calisthenics-based things, the split might not be optimal because if you only have one hour to train everything, it might just not leave enough time to work on every single skill that you want to do. You're not going to be able to work on getting your handstand push-up, your planche, your front lever, your one-arm chin-up, your front lever roll, all of this, your iron cross, everything in one workout, it just doesn't make any sense. And this is where the split really hits its limits. Honestly. Full body split, I absolutely love it, but let's see what else is there because I'm sure for many of you guys, we can make training more efficient. Next up, we have the upper and lower body split. Now, honestly, not the most typical split or the most popular split when it comes to calisthenics training, mainly because most dudes who train calisthenics don't want to train their legs. It's maybe not as fun, doesn't look as good at the beach, or simply because if you want to get really good at front levels, really good at planches, a shortcut could be to simply not train your legs. Hey, if you want to look like a comic, Go ahead, be my guest. But hey, your planche might be super cool. It's amazing. If you want to look healthy, if you want to have a well-balanced physique, you need to train your legs. So this upper-lower body split could be a good solution. A cool thing here is that you don't have to do two of this and two of that. You could do two upper body days and one lower body day. So you're basically going to take your full body workout that you used to do. You take all the leg exercises out. And you're going to replace those couple sets that you did for legs with more upper body exercises. You're going to take all the leg exercises, add a little bit more volume on top, and there you have your lower body day. This split is great if you're looking to build strength. And what I also really like about the split is that you could, for example, train at the calisthenics power for your upper body work, and then you can go to the gym for your lower body work. Because let's be honest, you're not going to efficiently train your legs at the calisthenics park. You need some weights. You got to do some squats. You got to do some lunges. You got to do some deadlifts. You're not going to grow for a long time using just calisthenics to train your legs. Now, there are two real downsides when it comes to the upper lower body split. One of them I've kind of already mentioned, there are significantly more goals to work on on your upper body day than on your lower body day, making this kind of like an uneven, unbalanced training split. Additionally, a problem that I'm seeing with doing a dedicated lower body day is that if you're doing a lot of intensity and volume for your legs in one workout, the day after your legs are going to be sore. This means your upper body day is going to be so much harder because you need your legs for the handstand push-up, for a planche, for front level, for everything. You have to lift your legs. If they are sore, it's going to get significantly harder. And with this, your upper body day is going to become less efficient. But the upper and lower body split can still be something for you. If you're used to doing full body splits, but you're starting to realize that a workout for the entire body for everything is simply not enough, this could be a great way for you to transition into more specific splits that we're going to talk about next. You simply take the leg exercises, take them out. You continue with a workout that you kind of already know. You're just making it a little bit more upper body focused. Slowly, one step at a time, we transition into the next split, the push and pull split. Possibly the best split when it comes to calisthenics training. Now, the idea on this split is that on day one, you're gonna do all of your pushing skills, like say, for example, the planche, the handstand push up, the dips, all of these kind of things. And on day two, you're gonna work on pulling skills, one arm chin up, front lever roll, whatever it's gonna be. One side of your body works whilst the other side recovers. I'm currently training with a variation of the split, and I think truly it is the best split when it comes to calisthenics or possibly even to strength training in general. When it comes to legs in the split, you can either do an additional day just for legs, or you can split your leg exercises and put them into your push and your pull day. Me, for example, I take my squats, put them into the push day, and my deadlifts into the pull day. And honestly, that's something that I've realized there. There's a big carryover between the way that you engage in a heavy deadlift and your front level. So I believe training the two of them in the same workout is going to be really beneficial, not just for strength gains, but also for your mind-muscle connection. 
mind muscle connection being so very important of course in all calisthenics skills but especially for the front level learning to retract to really use the lats and not just your triceps or your chest it's gonna make a massive difference in your front level gains now assuming you're not doing a dedicated leg day but you're putting your leg work into the push and pull day you can do four workouts per week that's going to allow you a lot of flexibility while still giving you a high frequency for your skills and for your goals that's great if you're rather advanced and you want to train hard, you could potentially even train six times per week. But that's a lot of pressure. You have to sleep a lot. You're going to have to eat a lot. You have to be very consistent and disciplined with your schedule. If you miss one single workout, things get difficult because you can't really move things around. You don't have space. You don't want to mess with your one day off. And if you skip one workout, you're going to end up with like three pushing and two pulling sessions or something like this. Make it less convenient unless you're quite good at programming and you can then mix on this last day of the week, the push and the pull day together, for example, turning it into a full body day. If you are doing dedicated leg sessions, you're probably going to end up with five workouts per week, two push, two pull, one leg. But as you see, there is flexibility here. And at the end of the day, it's going to be up to your personal goal, preferences, level of experience and time at hand. But no split is perfect. And there are downsides to the push and pull split as well. One of them being it could become difficult to justify when to train the muscle up or the human flag, since both of them are pushing and pulling skills. Honestly, do a muscle up. What do you think is harder, the pull up or the dip? You're going to put it on that day. I think it's very easy and it's just important you don't overthink it. The real downside of the push and pull skill where kind of this entire system gets thrown out of the window and nothing works anymore is that you're not truly just using your pushing and just using your pulling muscles. That's the problem. Your triceps and your biceps is basically involved in every single exercise. Think front level. Your triceps is working pretty hard, but it's on a pull day. Or think planche and Maltese. How many times did you hear that a gymnast rip that biceps tendon doing a planche or a Maltese? So clearly the biceps is working hard on those pushing days as well. So this idea of doing A, B, A, B, A, B six times a week on a scientific level doesn't perfectly work out. I personally think it works out close enough that we can absolutely do that. But it's not perfect either. That's something that you really want to keep in mind. Last but not least for the push and pull split, it might not be the perfect split for beginners because if you're just starting out training calisthenics, it's going to be difficult for you to do an entire session just for pushing work or an entire session just for pulling work. I do recommend to use the push and pull skill when you have about six to nine or possibly even 12 months of experience with calisthenics training. You want to be comfortable with the moves. You want to be already pretty fit, but then this push and pull split can be super beneficial. A split that was very popularized for calisthenics and gymnastic strength training is the bend arm straight arm split. Basically what it means is that on one day you're going to do all of your bend arm work, push-ups, pull-ups, handstand push-ups, biceps curls, whatever it's going to be. Well, basically whenever your arm bends. And on the other day you do all the skills where you have a straight arm, where your arm is fully locked out. Maltese, front lever, back lever, skin the cut, iron cross, inverted iron cross, whatever it's going to be, all of these skills, as long as your elbow is fully locked. This means that basically every single workout is going to be a full body workout. There's no proper division of anything and you're going to use everything in every single workout. This precise fact is going to make this split when you first think about it kind of useless. But when you dive a little bit deeper, you can see how this split can be outstanding for rather advanced athletes. If you are a very high level calisthenics athlete, you're going to be working on things with locked out arms that put huge amounts of pressure on your tendons. I'm fully talking Maltese, Iron Cross, all of the high level calisthenics skills where you hear injuries happening. Now an approach could be to use the first day of the week to work on these hard skills, work on your Maltese. Then you're going to take a day off, possibly even two days off, and then you're going to get two more workouts in the week, band arm skills, where you can focus on building strength. So we're going to have one workout per week, and often that's enough for these high level skills because you need such a long time for your tendons to recover. On this one workout per week, you are going to push your Maltese hard. You're going to do your attempts. And at the end of the week, you're doing your band arm conditioning to reinforce, to build more strength, yet to allow your tendons to somewhat recover and to make sure you can actually stay healthy. This split can also be good for, let's call them not professional calisthenics athletes who are not quite as high level yet. Say, for example, you did the push and pull split for six months and you want to change up your training. Band arm straight arm could be a great approach here. Maybe you've built all of the strength doing push and pull and now you finally want to max out on your skills. You're going to have one workout where you can do your human flag and one workout where you can finally do your muscle up. That can be an approach. That's an approach that I've used for myself and an approach for clients. Is it from my standpoint the most efficient way of training calisthenics? No, absolutely not. Unless 
you are one of those very few who are actually seriously working on extremely high level calisthenic skills. Now, these are the traditional splits that you usually hear people talking about. And I think they're great. There's enough here that every single one can find their perfect workout routine. Now, honestly, if building strength or working on skills is the only thing you're truly interested in, then the full body split or the push and pull split is going to be all you need. But personally, I think when we move away from those splits in more specific training situations, things can get very, very interesting very quickly. If you're an athlete that has a main sport that is not calisthenics, say, for example, Brazilian jiu-jitsu, dance, whatever it's going to be, working this full body split every single day could be an interesting idea. Hear me out. You're going to do very little work per muscle group, possibly only one or two hard working sets per muscle group per day. And you're going to keep your rep count really nice and low. So all of these sets are going to be quite intense. Because you're only doing a very little amount of sets, you're not going to fatigue as much. You're probably not going to get sore, which means you're going to have more energy for your actual, for your real sport. Yet you're still going to be able to make tremendous gains in the calisthenics field. Another way to change up your training split could be by adjusting the intensity of your workouts throughout the week. For example, starting with very high intensity, difficult workouts at the beginning of the week, and then towards the end of the week when you start to get more tired, we're going to do less intense set with a slightly higher rep count, focusing less on strength building and more on hypertrophy. Those days are going to allow you to recover a little bit more, preparing for those harder days that are coming up again at the beginning of next week. Yet, while you're still working on skills or on strength or on hypertrophy, you keep the stimuli going and you're going to continue to grow. Especially if you're working on calisthenic skills, these lower intensity days throughout the end of the week, these, let's call them technique days, could be great. Say, for example, you're working on super advanced tuck planche during your hard days, you're able to do 8 to 10 seconds holds for 3 or 4 sets. On those easier days, you might dial it back to an advanced tuck planche, but do 4 sets of 25 seconds. You're going to hold it significantly longer, but with less intensity. Like this, you can play around. You can get a great overall training. Your training is going to be very well balanced, not too repetitive, healthy, and you're going to make them gains. You could also take this full body split and train up to four or even six times per week. But here's where things get difficult and you have to really think about what you're going to do. Monday could, for example, be a bend arm day. On this bend arm day, we're going to have a main focus on push. We are doing a full body workout, but we're going to focus on planche push-ups, handstand push-ups, dips, and chin-ups. Full body, right? Tuesday is going to be a straight arm day. We're going to work front levers and chest flies or Maltese flies, for example. Wednesday is going to be a day off. We get full recovery. So Thursday, we are somewhat fresh to dive back in. It's again going to be a bend arm day, but this time we're going to switch it around. It's going to be pulling focused. We're going to work on our one arm chin ups, on our front level rows, and on our dips. Friday, finishing the week strong with another straight arm day. Now, this straight arm day is going to be a push focused day. We're going to do planches, Maltesers, and say, for example, the Iron Cross. You are sticking to the bend arm straight on there. You're doing full body workouts every single day, but you're only doing intense work for one body part at a time. So you're kind of mixing the idea of full body, bend arm straight arm with the push and pull split. Do I recommend this to anybody? Not really. I think that we're making things significantly too complicated. But there might be specific reasons why you want to have a split like this, why this split would work well for you. And really the takeaway point here is that the only limiting point that you're going to have here is your creativity. No matter what is the problem with your workout split, why you think something might not work, we can always find a way to program around limiting points. If they're in life, you only have access to the gym once a day, you can only have access to rings once a day, no matter what it is, we can work around problems and create very difficult and very complicated training splits to make it perfect for you. You just have to think, write it down, try it, work on it, make it work. The last question that I get a lot when it comes to training splits is, how do I know if a training split works? How long do I have to stick to it? And what are the right exercises to pick? Should I do chin-ups, assisted one-arm chin-ups, ultra chin-ups? Based on what can I choose my exercises? Honestly, this is really where the finesse of your coach and your own experience is really going to come to play. First of all, if you find a split that works for you, theoretically, there's not really a reason to ever drastically change the split. We've been over it that there's really not that many splits. There's full body, push-pull, push-pull legs, upper-lower, bend down straight down, which is full body. At the end of the day, it's really full body or push and pull. If you found a workout structure that works well for you on a weekly level, I don't think that you really ever have to change it drastically. But you do have to make adjustments every once in a while because you need to keep on surprising your body. Now, the first rule of thumb here is 
Don't mess with something if it's not broken, right? This is one of the biggest problems that we're facing in society nowadays anyways. Because of the internet, because everything is so easily available, instead of focusing on what you have and actually appreciating life for what it is, you're constantly comparing your life to other people, to other things, to whatever. So instead of telling yourself, yeah, this is good, I am good, you're constantly thinking, hey, maybe something else could be better. So when it comes to your calisthenics training, the only questions that you have to ask yourself are, are you healthy? Are you making gains? Are you having fun? If the answer to these questions is yes, don't touch it. You have the ultimate training split already. There are really two reasons why you might want to exchange an exercise or your entire training split. The first one is that you want to exchange an exercise when you believe another exercise can give you more gains, can get you a more efficient and better strength building stimuli, or another progression might be better for your technical gains. Generally speaking, from my experience, this happens every three to six months, but it can also happen much later or much faster. Say, for example, the handstand push-up. Many of us can use the handstand push-up with very slight variations to progressions for an extremely long time to build strength, right? Eventually, you might feel like you hit a plateau, and at that point, hey, maybe we'll take the handstand push-up out and put a military press instead. Whatever, we can get creative. But we want to see what's going to give us the most bang for the buck. If it's just about strength building, usually longer time under tension, being able to move more weight per rep, and getting the muscle under a good stretch, as when the muscle is stretched, you get the most strength gain, is going to work well for us. Another reason why you might want to exchange an exercise is because the exercise is giving a toll on your body. Say, for example, you're practicing one-arm chin-ups and you're doing existed one-arm chin-ups and you feel yourself getting stronger, but you also realize that your elbow is starting to hurt more and more and you're pretty sure if you continue, you're going to get injured properly. So we know we have to exchange this exercise. Now we're going to think, okay, if I take the one-arm chin-up out, what can I put in instead? It's still going to give me a great strength gain, but it's not going to hurt my elbow as much. Maybe just exchanging it from the ball to the rings might already be the solution that you're looking for if not maybe weighted ring chin-ups, right? You have a lot of options that you can replace exercises with. You want to replace the exercise if you feel like you're not getting good strength stimuli anymore or if you think that the exercise might be injuring you. If it's not hurting you and you are getting stronger, you are getting better at your skill, don't touch it. It's perfect. Ultimately, it's easy to say there's not one perfect split that fits for everyone. The full body split, the push and pull split in general works well for most people. Keep in mind, though, that what works for you probably won't and really shouldn't work for that person next to you. And what works today might not work in three or six months as you are forever growing, forever changing in your environment and your goals might adapt to you over time. Your training split needs to be well calculated, well thought through and honest. You have to be honest with your goals. You have to be realistic with your time at hand and how consistent you can stay with your training. It's important that your training split changes every once in a while because you have to keep on challenging your body. But you also need to make sure your training split stays consistent for long enough to actually be able to see how the split is going to change your body. And no, four weeks is not enough time to truly see the effects that a workout plan might be having on your body. Thank you so much for listening. If you have any questions, head down to the comments below and ask away. I'm more than happy giving you advice on your training splits and helping you figure out which is the right split for you and how you can divide your exercises throughout the week to make the most gains, to have fun, and to crush it. Thanks for tuning in. I'm going to see you next time. Coach Bachmann.